When I was gathering information for this video, I stumbled across a video with drunk animals. Don't get me wrong, humans have nothing to do with it. The animals just ate the fermented marula fruits. But I don't really care about alcohol issues in the wild. I'm interested in this particular elephant, this particular tree, and these particular monkeys. Yes, it is what you think it is. The elephant is trying to shake the monkeys off the tree. And he's putting a lot of effort into this, as if this task is part of his daily routine. Stomping on the spot, douse oneself with water, shake off a couple of monkeys, eat corn crops. Though it could be just a coincidence, right? Animals do thousands of strange actions. Some seem meaningful, although there is actually no rationale behind them. Maybe the elephant decided to shake the tree just because he felt like it. Or to shake down not fully ripe fruits. You never know. And the monkeys were unfortunate to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not a bad theory, but the problem is that elephants do this all the time. Here, for example, we can see the same thing happening to the poor leopard. Moreover, it was already dark. Elephants are actually diurnal animals, and this one's been shaking the tree at night for several hours. Seems like he remembered the leopard and is now taking revenge for something. Aha, lion, I recognized you. Now you are alone, without your pride. Get off! But I'm not a lion! Seems like no one can get a break when elephants are around. Not a single living creature is left out, even the smallest creatures, which should probably not be of interest to elephants. But birds? Wandering and flying around here? Get out of here! Shoot! Turtles! No turtles in my territory! To be honest, at first I thought the elephant would at least not care about these animals. After all, it's just a slow stone with legs. But no. Good thing the turtle turned out to be just a robot put there by scientists. Imagine if the elephant stumbled across a real one. But there must be a reason behind this behavior. You can't just bother all the animals that come across your way without any reason, and the researchers managed to find it. Or rather, they found several reasons at once. First of all, elephants are very territorial animals. Strictly speaking, they do not guard their territory the way many other animals like primates, bears, or even domestic cats do. Some scientists even believe elephants can cannot be called territorial, and yet these animals prefer to stick to their feeding areas and are not always happy to see strangers on them, especially when it comes to an area with a water source. A herd of elephants will easily chase away hippos, which could just happen to be near their watering place. Are hippos getting in the way? Barely. They're just annoying. Do you know that feeling when a person next to you pisses you off for no particular reason? Imagine they also try to eat your lunch. Joey doesn't share food! <laughs> What do you think? Chasing someone away from water and even more so attacking them is terribly rude? Animals don't do that at all. After all, at the watering place, all the animals uphold an unspoken truce, which cannot be violated, or you could, I don't know, become a villain in the new Disney movie? If you also have this vague feeling, then you must have read The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. Thanks to this writer, people think that animals have some kind of code of honor, although any predator will gladly grab a bite without leaving the watering place. What? It's convenient. You can have a drink and a snack at the same place. But back to the elephants. Another reason they can attack random animals is called must. This is a natural state that male elephants periodically go into when their testosterone levels rise 60 times. Such hormonal surges affect behavior, and the elephant becomes as aggressive as he can get. Also, he grows oversensitive to sounds and movements. His anxiety and the amount of energy increase. Can you imagine this combination in a huge adult elephant? Elephant smash! Of course, in a must state, an elephant attacks anyone who seems annoying enough to him. A human, an animal, even another elephant. Still, aggression is not always the reason why elephants love bothering other animals so much. Sometimes the elephant just wants to play. Come on, everyone has a playful mood, so why should elephants be any different? They have a sufficiently advanced intellect to enjoy this. African elephants assume over 200 different poses, conveying a variety of emotions and desires. Through posing, they also show an invitation to play. It's just that not all animals can recognize it. Well, even humans do not always understand what exactly elephants are trying to express, so what can I say about rhinos? These guys do not have enough intellect to distinguish between all sorts of subtleties. Eat, make sure they're not eaten. Procreate, they love simple things. So when the elephant wants to play, he receives aggression in response and then fights back. Listen, this is probably very sad to have really cool cognitive abilities and live in a world where few creatures can understand you. 
Turns out elephants suffer from their intelligence, and it's not only about difficulty finding playmates. Constant communication and some kind of activity are a necessity for elephants, otherwise they'll start to get bored. Boredom soon leads to social stress, aggression, and abnormal behavior. To prevent this from happening in zoos, employees come up with various activities for the animals. In the wild, looking for food is usually enough, but what if that isn't? Or what if the elephant, I don't know, gets sad? It's unlikely that praying mantises or goldfish have these kind of issues, but elephants can easily get upset due to some external factors. Even accidentally seeing a snake is enough to get the animal upset. In response to a stressful event, elephants usually raise their ears and tails and then make a low rumble to ask for consolation. And it works. Other elephants immediately rush to the poor fellow, touch him with their trunks, and make chirping sounds. I'm not sure if they really understand how comforting is supposed to work. Well, you know, when one elephant puts his trunk in another elephant's mouth, it somehow doesn't really comfort you. Well, as if people are any better. There, there. Advanced intelligence is generally not a problem only elephants have. Many highly developed animals need something to constantly occupy their brains, have fun, set goals, experience emotions, engage in physical activity. In the Belgian Zoo, the habitats of otters and orangutans intersect so that the animals could play with each other. Turned out these species get along great, but if it were not for constant contact with otters, orangutans could, well, even get sick from loneliness and boredom. Turns out it's simply not practical for animals to experience emotions. See for yourself. Not all people have learned to cope with them. But what if you are, for example, a panda, a raccoon, or an elephant? After all, a wild animal will not be able to get psychological therapy to sort out its feelings, though they sometimes can put their lives at risk. For example, when mourning their loss, animals behave totally unreasonably in terms of survival. Just think about it. The desire for solitude, lack of communication, sleep, food, and I don't even mention procreation. And if an elephant spends time attending to a corpse, it's exposed to pathogens and makes himself vulnerable to predators. You have to admit, in a situation like this, it'd be much easier to live without emotions. Many animals do not worry at all, even if their close relative dies. And they feel great, because sadness can end badly. An animal too lost in its grief not simply eats less, it stops eating altogether. Lack of food and social interaction gradually wears out even the toughest body, and in such conditions, it's impossible to survive in the wild. Can we say this is death caused by grief? Perhaps. Well, enough about the sad stuff. Moreover, this is not the only problem caused by the high intelligence of elephants. Being so smart, these animals have become the nastiest pests ever, in every sense of the word. When some wild animals prefer not to get involved with people unless absolutely necessary, the elephants think differently. Why waste time looking for food when there's a whole buffet in the fields, easy and fast to get, and also nutritious? As for the people who don't seem to be happy about it, eh, who even cares about them? Moreover, most of the tricks that help scare away other wild animals do not work on elephants. Traditionally, farmers have used loud noises such as drums, shooting in the air, or exploding firecrackers, but elephants are smart and persistent. They understand all this rumbling will not harm them, so why stop? What's more, according to National Geographic, elephants have even learned to pull tranquilizer darts from each other's sides. No, really. Anyone still hope the drums would work on these guys? I hate this job. Looks like you have a problem with elephants? It seems so weird, it almost sounds insane. But bees really help people fight these huge mammals. African elephants are afraid of their bites because insects, especially African honeybees, can sting the eye or inside the trunk. The best way to avoid pain is stay away from the hives or even run away when you hear the familiar buzzing sound. So for now, the only fail-proof and effective way to deal with elephants is to install a fence made of beehives. Though let's wait a little. Perhaps the elephants will soon come up with protective suits. See you later.